So, on Discord the other day, someone told me that one of the worst thing you can do is completely change your UI from one update to another. Which is exactly what I'm going to do for the next update. Right. Yes, it's true, I'm planning to change my UI from this to this. And let me know in the comment if you think I've improved it, but personally I think it's an improvement, especially for the PC. The problem is that this UI wouldn't work on mobile, and my game also plays on mobile. So when I started designing the UI for Solar Rogue, I was planning to release it on mobile first. I was really happy with the design and the big buttons that fit perfectly well with your thumbs when you're holding your device, and at the same time, I thought I did a pretty good trick to make it work well on PC with showing the shortcuts and having the buttons kind of be at the same time an explanation of everything you can do in the game without having to look at the manual or have a tutorial that will explain to you everything you have to do. But like I said in the previous episodes, recently I've been working really hard to try to improve the look of my game to make it more attractive to potential players. And one of the things I've been doing is researching, investigating different HUDs and UI elements that you find in different games. And one of the things that I really noticed straight away is that big buttons on your UI kind of yell mobile game to everyone, especially when you're on PC. It's like so obvious that it's a ported game from mobile and then people just go away and refuse to look at it. So what can I do? On the one hand, I can't really remove the buttons because if I want the game to be playable, I have to have button on mobile because this is the only way you can interact with the game. But on the other hand, if you look at normal PC HUDs, there isn't usually big buttons everywhere on the screen. And to be honest, buttons take a lot of real estate that could be used for something else, like showing you where an enemy ship is. So actually, before even the last update I released, I kept working on trying to improve the HUD, I kept a copy of the HUD and I was playing around with it, trying to reorganize the button, change the button, make them smaller, bigger, put them into some kind of container, hide them, make them transparent. I really tried a lot of stuff. And my conclusion was that really, if I want a good looking PC HUD, I just have to have different HUD on PC and on mobile. So my HUD is already a separate scene from my main game, because if you're not making scenes for everything in Godot, you're probably not using Godot to its full potential. So what I did is I copied that scene and I renamed it HUD PC, and I started playing around with the buttons, making them smaller, hiding them inside containers, and all in all trying to come up with a really nice design for the PC. Once I had that, I removed the direct link to my HUD that I had in the main scene and I replaced it with a script that will instantiate the right scene based on the os.getName method of Godot that helps you easily identify which platform you're running on. One of the problems I had with this is that I have a player node and this player node registered to all the buttons in the HUD to know when one button is pressed. But now that I have two HUDs, the buttons are not all at the same place, so I can't just do a get node, and I'm not going to add like millions of export for each button twice. So my solution was to have global events, and now I have the mobile and the PC HUD trigger these global events on their button presses, and then I have the player register to these global events. And to be honest, I kind of like this solution because it completely decouples the HUD from the player and I could even potentially trigger myself in the code events related to the HUD for like tutorials or something. Even though I still kind of feel strange about having to add a global events every time I want to add a button in my HUD, but I think in the long run, it's gonna be a good solution. Now, as I was testing this new HUD, I was pretty happy with the layout and everything, but I still felt like it was a little bit too big for what it really needed to be. And the problem is not the resolution because I'm running my phone in 1080p and my computer screen is 1080p. The problem is that <laughs> on my phone, the 1080p is fit into four inches and on my computer, it's 24 inches. So the same text is really easily readable on my computer, but barely readable on my phone, even though it's the same resolution. 
So I was wondering what I could do about it, maybe changing the font and stuff. Godot really impressed me here because I already knew about the uh, stretch mode that you can set in your project setting to tell Godot how to upscale your interface to fit the current native resolution. But what I didn't know is that you can actually change these settings at runtime and Godot will just automatically update your app's native resolution to fit the new scaling mode, which is really powerful. What does that mean exactly? Well, it means that if you set up your UI properly to support multiple resolution using a flowing layout where your items will resize and position themselves automatically based on anchors and percentage of uh, resolution, then you'll be able to upscale your UI without anything moving out of place. And you do this by using the method getTree.setScreenStretch and passing it the stretch mode and the resolution you want to have as the native app resolution. And then Godot will automatically use this to rescale all your UI element and position them properly in your screen. Now, at first, my UI wasn't perfect. It wasn't flowing really well. So I had to fix a couple of things and a few buttons that would end up at weird places. But in the end, here's what it looks like when the screen resolution is set to 720p. And here's what it looks like when it's set to 1080p. And as you can see, all the text and everything is just a little bit smaller. The containers are bigger, but all in all, the whole flow stays the same. And I think on PC, it looks much better. I'm even wondering if I shouldn't be putting this in a configuration where you can just set the scale you want for your UI for people with tablets, for example, they might want the PC scaling, but for people with small phones or really high resolution like the iPhone, they could choose to have a much smaller scaled or bigger scaled, or I don't know how to say it, but a really big text, right? So yeah, that might be something I do in the future. But for now, just switching it based on your current device is a really nice way of doing it, I think. <laughs> now, I just hope that I'm not gonna have to do this for all the other UIs in my scene, all the dialogue box and everything, because that would be a huge pain to have to duplicate all of this. But I think for the full screen dialogues I have, then probably it's fine to keep the uh, mobile version of it. I guess in the long run, we'll have to see what everyone thinks, but uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and that's gonna be it for this week. See you all in my next episode, bye.